Welcome to our Hearts for Learning Maths Games. This game is Clock Patience. This game is Clock Patience. You deal out all the cards in a clock arrangement. So you have 12 here at the top, all the way around, and then you end up with four cards in the centre. The idea of the game is to try and reveal all the numbers all the way round. So this would be one, which you represent as an ace, the numbers all the way round, and then you have jack as 11 and queen as 12. You don't want to reveal a king. A king is the central pile. So you start by taking one of the cards from the centre and turning it over. So here we've re revealed a nine. Initially, you can play this game so the children just get familiar with where the numbers go in the clock face. But a slight adaptation to this is that you can use it to support the minutes the five past, ten past and so on. So I'd place the nine where it would be in the hours. So it would go here, where the nine is on the clock face. But I'd also encourage the children to tell me about what the nine represents in minutes. So the children could either count round the clock face in fives. So we could do five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So we could say that 9 represents 45 minutes past, but we can also then do the minutes 2. So we can say, well, it's 5, 10, 15 minutes to the next hour. And of course, 9 also represents the quarter to. So when they play that card, you'd want them to try and tell you all three of those facts. So it's 45 minutes past the hour. It's 15 minutes to the next hour that we say is quarter to. So you place the nine at the bottom of the pile there and then you take the top one and that's your next card. So we've now got seven. Seven goes here on our clock face. Again, we can work out that that is five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 minutes past. And then it is five, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes two. We take the top card off the seven pile and that reveals five. We recognise that this would be where the five is on our clock. And again, we'd work out how many minutes that represents. So we'd go round, that would be 25 minutes past. When I play this, I don't get the children to tell me how many minutes to when it's in the first half of the clock face, because we would very rarely say it's 35 minutes to the next hour. Put that on the bottom, reveal the top card, I've got another seven. I'd place that under the seven and again I'd get the child to tell me it's 35 minutes past, 25 minutes to. Take the top card again, I've got a ten. I'd place the ten at the relevant point. Now hopefully the children will begin to learn facts, so rather than always having to count round from the o'clock, all the way round, they might say, oh, I remember nine is 45, 10 must be 50, and it's 10 to. So it's 50 minutes past, 10 to. Take the top card again, I've got another five. So that would be there, and it would be 25 past. A six, so six goes at the bottom. I'd want them to be able to tell me that that was 30, represented 30, but I'd also want them to know that's the half pass mark. Take the top card again. I've got an eight. Place it at the bottom. So here, if this is half past or 30, I might count on 35, 40. So it's 40 minutes past and it's five, 10, 15, 20 minutes too. Got another, another eight. A 10, so that was 50 minutes past, 10 to. I've got a jack. Remember, jack represents our 11. So my jack would go in here, which would be 55 minutes past, 5 to. Now, when you first play this, you might just, if you're concentrating on the analog clock, you might just get them to tell you the past and the two. So they get secure with that this is five, two, the next hour. 
why I got my children to practice both the past and the two was that my daughter was really struggling with the link between analog time and digital time. She had learned that this was five to the hour, but when it came to read it on a digital clock, she couldn't make the link with say 3.55 being five to four. So we practiced both. Nine, we've got back here. With the, the, the quarter past and quarter two, I get the children to say all three. So I'd say that this is 45 minutes past the hour. It's 15 minutes to the next hour, which we say is quarter two. Queen, Queen is our 12 on our clock or our O clock. So we'd say that's our O clock time or zero hours past. Four. So again, we've got five, 10, 15, 20. So that's 20 past, seven. I know that's half past, so 35 past or 25 two. Queen, another one of our o'clock or zero minutes. So we're linking that digital with the analog, three. So three is 15 minutes and we know that as quarter past. Jack, that would be our 11 on the clock. So that is five two or 55 past two. 10 past, another one of our O clocks or zero minutes on our digital. Four. So we're constantly putting the card under the pile. Eventually, we'll reveal all the, all the numbers around the clock. Right, we've got our first king. So when we get a king, we place that in the pile in the center and we take the top one there. What the aim is, is to try and reveal all the numbers around the edge before you get all the kings. Here's a reminder of how to play clock patience. You'll need a pack of playing cards. You deal out all the cards in a clock face arrangement, placing a card in the middle each time. So you end up with four cards in each pile and four cards in the middle. The aim of the game is to reveal all the cards on the outside of the clock face before you end up with four kings in the middle. You start by taking one of the cards from the central pile and placing it in the position it represents on the clock face. You then take the top card from that position and that becomes your next card that you play. You keep going until you reveal all the numbers round the outside or you get all the kings. The maths that this game supports. It really helps the children with telling the time, something that we know that the children find difficult. Initially, it supports the children with the position of the, where the numbers go on the clock face, the hour positions. But in this game, we want the children to also tell you the minutes that those numbers represent, both the minutes past the hour, and if past number six on the clock, the minutes to the hour. In addition, when working out the minutes, the children will be practicing counting in fives. In our version of Clock Patience, we've already made an adaptation to the original game, getting the children to say the minutes past and the minutes to, as well as recognizing the hour number. In addition to this, you could also get them to think about both the analog and the digital time they're representing. So for example, if a nine is picked, that nine can represent both the hour and the minutes, and they can tell you what that time would be on an analog clock. So we'd normally read that time as quarter to 10, but on a digital clock, we'd say 9.45. To take it one step further, you could also link this to the 24 hour clock and they could say what that time represents for both the morning and the afternoon. So if we had our nine again, in the morning, it would be 09.45 or 9.45. In the evening, it would be 21.45. So this is how you could adapt the game even further. If you want to find out more about what the Hearts for Learning Maths team are up to, 
follow us on Twitter at HeartsMaths. You can join our Facebook group, Essential Maths Primary Maths Group. And if you'd like to see more of our games, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, where there's many more games that you can enjoy.